Hi guys, it's Crystal. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to use the air fryer again, but this time we're going to be using Cricut Infusible Ink. So last time we used sublimation with the Sawgrass SG400, normal sublimation, but this time we're going to use Cricut Infusible Ink, which if you guys haven't checked it out already, it's sublimation basically with your Cricut machine. All right, so I've already had my Cricut cut out my phrase here which is free if you're an access member and it says this might be wine and the color is actually going to be right here this party pink so I thought that would be really cute all right so the one that I'm going to be doing today is the wine glass and I'm going to be using these mug wraps so I talked about this in my last video these are over there on Amazon you can get them between nine and eleven dollars each different sizes they make them where they're kind of they're curved off like this like a v those are going to be for the cups that are like this i didn't order one of those so i need to go back and order one so i couldn't use this but it'll perfectly wrap around this the way that it's supposed to so you may want to have one of those on hand and these you're going to be using over and over and over and over again they're going to last you forever until you get them stained up and can't use them anymore um, or they stretch and stuff like that. Uh, these ones right here, I tried to use the 11 ounce and it wouldn't fit. So, um, and then this one was too big. I think I got the 15 ounce. So I need maybe a 12 here for this one. Um, and so I got the 11 and the 15 ounces what I got. So you may want to get like, there's 11, 17, there's tons of different sizes. There's the size for the shot glasses and all of that stuff. So definitely check that out. I'll have these linked down below. Now, if you watched my last video, you could also use, um, Condi's shrink wrap, which is designed for heat. So you can't use any shrink wrap, but, um, you can use Condi's sh uh, shrink wrap, which all you would do, you can get them in tons of different sizes, and you get about 50 for about 10 to $15, so that's a huge deal. Normally, for a wine glass like this, you'd want to take the plastic off. You would get your shrink wrap here, and you want to center it up. You don't necessarily have to use one this big, but you want some room on top and bottom, and you're just going to take... Just going to take a heat gun and heat this up and it's going to shrink really tight around this so this is awesome for a round surface so for example i'll have condi's video linked down below they have a hack for doing ones like this with the handle so i could utilize it just for these so i'm not too concerned about that so i do have some of these on hand i highly recommend these guys if i was going to pick one over the other so far i would definitely choose these you can get them in tons and tons of different sizes i could cut these in half i think these are the i don't think they eight and a half by 11 they're a bit short but um i could cut these in half and use you know turn it into two sheets and stuff like that they make them for the shot glass and all of that so highly highly recommend these guys so far i am obsessed with these ones now for the infusible ink, I'm going to show you how we're going to do it on this wine glass. So this one's more of um, a curved surface. So what I did was size this out. It's about three and a half by three and a half. And what I'm going to do is get this placed here. The first thing I did, I want to go ahead and mention is I took my scissors and I cut this. So hopefully you guys can see. I'm going to kind of pull that apart there so you guys can see. I went with my scissors here and just cut right here at the bottom and in between. So that way this can curve nicely. So I'm just going to get this lined up where I want it. Make sure that your mug is nice and clean. Just going to get that. And so these will perfectly, once you make those little slit lines, those are perfectly going to go down. So you're not going to have any issues. That's another great hack for even working with regular vinyl. So you can see how that went down nicely. Hope you guys can see that because my lighting. You guys can see that on there and see how that just curved by putting slits. I put a ton of them. I went on the sides up into these pieces here and that just helps that go on just like that. All right, next step, you're gonna wanna take your butcher paper and I'm gonna go face down and you really wanna get this super duper tight. Make sure when you go to tape this down, this as you couldn't get this any tighter, okay? So you wanna get this nice and tight. So I'm gonna do that really quick. You wanna use heat resistant tape. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut me a couple pieces of tape here. That way I'm prepared a little bit. All right, and like I said, we are going to wrap this as tight as we can. So I'm going to start by getting me a piece of tape here just to hold it. And I'm just going to try to twist this as tight as I can. And then get my tape down, just like so. All right, now what you want to do to protect this, because if I just did the one... This is going to come through here and it's going to stain this and then it's basically trash. So what you want to do is if I had more of a round, uh, a perfect surface like this, I would actually use cardstock 
because you'd only need one piece and it's going to protect it very, very nice. So I would cut that down and I would put that down after I put on the butcher paper, just one piece. But since this is a weird shape, I'm going to use some more of the butcher paper. So I'm just gonna make sure I do the same thing over and over again. So I'm gonna speed this process up and I'm adding on three more pieces. So that's four sheets total. I'm wrapping on that last piece, just super tight. And all of these mugs, once again, are from Condi. I highly recommend you check them out for their um, for their blanks. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna make sure where my images is gonna go face down in the middle there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get get it just like this. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna go through here and then you're just gonna push tight and it's gonna clamp on just like that. So you can see the rubber has pulled around here super tight, so it's really nice. So if you feel like you need to adjust that, you can always pop it back off and center that down just a little bit to make sure, you wanna make sure it's gonna be nice and tight. So it's just gonna pop on just like that. Okay, so I should feel like everything is nice and tight, and everything's nice and secure. So at this point, what we're gonna do is open this up. This is just gonna lay right down inside. We're gonna shut it. It's on 400 degrees and we're gonna go for nine minutes. Just like that. Also, make sure before you put those in, if they have any sort of plastic lid or anything, you remove that first. Okay, so just ding, it's done, but look what my daughter just brought me. So yummy, I can't wait to eat it. Okay, so I just had to share. All right, once again, I wanna note like I did in my last video, I could smell a little bit. It's almost like the paper, you can see where that's yellowing. I'm gonna bring that up a little bit. Um, it's almost like, you know when you burn paper, that's what it smells like. It's just we're starting to yellow. But this did not smell like the first time. So I think the first time was there was a new machine. Definitely make sure it's in a well ventilated area, whether it's outside or somewhere where it's well ventilated, windows open or something, just so you're not breathing that stuff in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my oven mitt because I was prepared this time. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this. This time I'm just gonna drop it straight down into the water. So you can hear that kind of sizzling. Flip that over. And this isn't ice water or anything like that. It's just cold water. So, so I'm just trying to cool that down a little bit faster. Now, if you weren't in a hurry like me because I'm doing a video, I would highly recommend just taking some towels or something, um, something that's heat resistant, some heat resistant silicone on top of this and placing it on there and letting it dry naturally. But because we're doing a video, um, I'm trying to speed up the process. Do something, make sure you use an oven mitt when you're doing this process that can handle the heat. Don't try to use anything other than that. All right, so I'm thinking that's pretty cooled down, so that's pretty nice. All right, so what I'm gonna do is right inside, all you have to do is pop this up and then push open like this. So I can see where that paper was starting to brown and I'm hoping that didn't come off onto the cup. So we may have to change our times, start to peel this off. So once again, you can see where it was starting to brown, which is probably where it was face down. So maybe half through, uh, maybe get your oven mitt and flip it over so that way it's not sitting on one side because I'm really hoping that didn't kind of come off on my mug like that, which it looks like it did. So this may be a failed attempt, which like I said, is my fault because of the times. I need to figure that out. If I can at least get some of this off, if I soak it, I could probably get some of this paper off. And I wonder if we took like one of those white, um, what do you call those, Mr. Clean or something where you wipe? I wonder if it wouldn't take that yellow off. But so far, I'm going to say this is a failed attempt. This is my second attempt, and like I said, probably need to lower our time. It wouldn't take so long. So you can see the infusible ink did go right on there. So that is nice, it's just where it's set. This is where it's set inside the machine like this. So either halfway through we need to flip it over because it didn't do it to the other side. Um, and I honestly think maybe we need to take it down to five minutes instead of nine minutes. So five minutes and then flip. So maybe that would help um, you know, not get to this point. We definitely need to test it out again. So I've been trying to scrub at this just barely a little bit, maybe one or two minutes, it really wasn't very long. So. What I decided to do, instead of sitting here trying to keep scraping at this for a second, I really rubbed and rubbed and rubbed and rubbed at this spot here. And it's not changing the color, so this is definitely not going to work. Um, but like I said, so far, one thing I just thought about, I probably should have went over to Condi's um, 
website because this is a metal and not a ceramic like we did before so obviously we wouldn't need probably even 400 degrees heat i bet i pr probably should have put it about you know 350 360 and then i did a lower time because this is like a thinner you know don't take very long to get the product on there compared to ceramic it's so thick so I need to go into Condi and look at their heat settings for this mug to see what the what their difference is compared to a ceramic mug. And that may have been the mistake. We definitely need to try it again. But at this point, I'm like, I don't know. It's not the infusible ink, I'll tell you that. So it's not the infusible ink. So you can do this. So if you want to do the same method like I showed you in the first video with infusible ink on ceramic, highly recommend. But we really need to go in and play with the Tim. So right now with the metal cups... I wouldn't really recommend those since they're so thin and more delicate in the air fryer. Um, now, like I said, now you may watch some other videos. Somebody may go in. I'm not really going to fiddle with it because I don't want you guys to waste a bunch of product and say, yeah, go do it. When I really think the time and the temp's going to have to be fiddled with for the metal, if that makes sense. So my theory for the, um, for, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say it with the metal. So my theory with sublimating on metal is a no. So I definitely don't recommend doing the metal ones in the air fryer at this time. I said, you're just gonna have to be cautious with the metals. I wouldn't do it. I would only do ceramic. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I'm gonna quit rambling on. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please hit the like button down below and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.